Good morning. Good morning. We're certainly glad to see you this morning. It's a little cool this morning. No place I'd rather be. First Psalm 296. Here. Everybody good? Here. Blow your horn if you can hear. You're good. Sounds good. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord, worship Him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ. It's certainly good to see you all here this morning. We have a good crowd this morning. We're certainly glad that you're here. I want to make just a few announcements, then we'll continue with our morning worship service. I have a card here that I would like to uh, to read. And this is from the uh, family of Jerry Wilburn. It says, "We wanted to thank you for all for the kindness and prayers and friendship shown to our son Jerry Wilburn during his sickness and death." We know there has been sadness in your church, but we all know there is a, a brighter day. And that's from the family of Jerry Wilbur. I will post this in there. <clears throat> I want to continue to remember all those that we have on our prayer list. Of course, we have those that have lost loved ones. We will continue to remember the Kirby family. And uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, lead the singing for the full service this morning. Uh, Al may have to tag in some people. If he does there, he'll just take over and we will. But I appreciate all the efforts that's gone into uh, continuing our services as we have had uh, some interruptions due to sickness and we're, we're so thankful for everything that goes into making this possible. Uh, we would, would like to have a, uh, a men's meeting following our service this morning. There's a few things that we need to discuss. So men, if you would, uh, I'll ask you to come inside and we'll be in the fellowship hall where we'll have plenty of room to, uh, to social distance and uh, if you, if you just take just a few minutes there's a few things that we need to discuss so we'd appreciate that i'll refer you to the back side of your bulletin if you've got a bulletin this morning uh there's going to be a baby shower coming up two weeks from today for jessica horton so uh if you would that's just going to be a drive-through shower and all those details are there on the back of your bulletin so if you would uh remember that it's going to be from two until four january the third so we appreciate uh you remembering that and make your plans to be a part of that I got a call uh, this morning from Ken and yesterday from uh, Geneva and, and she had to go and be retested and she is still testing positive so uh, that's where they're at this morning so I ask you to uh, remember them if you would. Uh, Ken has not gotten the results from his retest yet but uh, Geneva did continue to test positive so she's doing fine as far as uh, they've not said anything about her, her condition other than that. Uh, I want to remind you that our bulletin is now available online, uh, so make sure that you are, are tuned in to our website for that, and uh, we'll be sending you out links from that for that from the uh, Remind app, so make your plans to be there to uh, keep your eye on that Remind app also. I also want to mention uh, Katie Browder, that she tested positive for, for COVID this past week, and uh, her workplace, uh, Jimmy Willingham, uh, he is in the hospital with pneumonia in both lungs from this. Uh, he tested positive. Also, his wife, Rhonda, tested positive. So 
they requested prayers for, for that family, if you would remember them, and of course remember Katie in their prayers as well. If there's others that we don't know about, make sure that we... I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I want you to remember Donna Johnson. Uh, she had gotten some results back from her test this past week. She's going to have some treatments, uh, so if you would please continue to remember Donna in your prayers as well as she goes through this over the next the coming weeks. Again, thank you for that. If we overlook something, let us know. We'll make sure that that gets announced for you. Our next song, 716, Sing to Me of Heaven. Verses 1 and 3. Let's sing. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. From the tolls that by me it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing o'er my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven, sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low, till the shadows on me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven, sweetest song of all. This morning before we have our scripture reading and our opening prayer, sing 477. Near to the heart of God. Sing verses 1 and 3. Let's sing. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest. chapter 2, I'm going to begin verse 1. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to 
Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Let's pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity that we have to come together in this situation and to worship you. And Lord, we pray that we go above and beyond to do whatever is required to worship you at all times as we are commanded. We're so thankful for this congregation here and the love that we have here. And we ask that you continue to be with us. We're all saddened by the recent passing of our minister, Brother Larry, and we just ask that you continue to be with his family and that you be with the others that we know about that are suffering now from this dreadful sickness and this pandemic that we're dealing with, and we ask that you be with them and give them strength as we go through these coming days and we look at the world that celebrates this holiday. Lord, we're so thankful for sending your son to this earth and to live as an example, and of course, most importantly to us is the death that he chose to be crucified upon the cross for each and every one of us so we have that opportunity of everlasting life in heaven with you and with him. Lord, we know that we sometimes sin. We'd ask for your forgiveness as you would please forgive us from our sins and we are showing a forgiving spirit to those that we come in contact with. We ask you continue to be with this congregation and through the coming days and that you help us to make some difficult decisions through the coming days and be with us in everything that we do and at, at all times we ask that everything that we do be in accordance to your will continue with us guide us and guard us in all that we do give us strength in Christ's name Amen prepare our minds for taking the Lord's Supper we'll sing number 344 oh in the grave he lay 344 Sing verses 1 and 3.
because through his death, we have the hope of heaven. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to remember his body as he commanded, and his blood which washes us clean. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you so very, very much for this opportunity to come around your table to partake of this bread which to us as Christians represents your Son as he hung on the cross between heaven and earth. We pray that as we do this, it will be pleasing in your sight. For we pray in his name, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Again, let's go to God in prayer. Father, again, we come around your table as commanded to partake of this fruit of the vine, which to us as Christians represents your son's shed blood on the cross for the remission of our sins. The only blood that can do this. We thank you for him. We thank you for his willingness to sacrifice himself. And we thank you for the hope of heaven. For with him we have it. In his name we pray, Jesus the Christ. Amen. part of the worship service is the first day of the week, which is what this is. And that's to contribute, to keep the church going, to keep the word going, and let the world know what we know. This takes some effort, and this takes some, some money. There will be a basket here if you care to donate. But let's go and thank God for what he's given us right now. Father God, we thank you so very much for all that you do for us, things that we can't even count. And we thank you, Father, for just, just being our God and allowing us to be your children. We thank you for the blessings you bring down upon us every single minute of every day. We thank you for our homes, our jobs, for our health. We thank you for our health system that is working so hard now to keep us well. We pray, Father, that you will look down upon us and be happy as we give back to you. And we pray in his name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Next, Psalm number 841. 841. Hide me, O my Savior. Sing verses 1 and 3 of this song. Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide me in thy holy place, resting there beneath thy glory. Oh, let me see thy face. Hide me, hide me, O oh, blessed Savior, hide me. Our message this morning will be 1005. 
2005. I don't know if you paid much attention to the news or my suggestion would be you probably shouldn't. Um, but tomorrow evening there is supposed to be what they're calling a, referring to as a Christmas star. It seems that uh, a couple of planets are going to align and after about 45 minutes after sunset you're supposed to be able to see a, a truly bright star. But actually what it is is two planets that are aligning and creating one star and they're, they're referring to that as a Christmas star so I invite you to uh, to kind of pay attention to that. It'll be on the 21st which is tomorrow and uh, it's going to have to clear up <laughs> but maybe you'll be able to see that uh, just after dark tomorrow evening. Sing about that star right now. Beautiful star in Bethlehem. We'll sing verses 1 and 3 of this song. After that, we'll have our message. Sing. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way. Unto the place where Jesus lay, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day beautiful star of bethlehem shine on oh beautiful star the hope of rest for the redeemed the good the blessed yonder in glory when the crown is won for jesus is now that star Divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us a light to light the into the land of perfect day, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here. Uh, you're in the right place. Um, if you're referring to Matthew chapter 18, it says, where two or three gather, I am with, with them also. And he's definitely with us this morning. We'll go to Matthew chapter 2 this morning, and I hope you had the chance to watch the video that Andy had sent out. It's kind of childish, if you will, but I do enjoy the animals and the cartoon characters. Um, and we, we will refer to that. If you didn't watch it, it's not a big deal. Um, again, let's go to Matthew chapter 2. And uh, to me, one of the most incredible images from any Christmas scene must be that of the wise men. And uh, them attending Jesus' birth in the star, it's just a wonderful story to me. But I think few of us know the details, um, and this is a very informational lesson, if you will. Um, so, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, Anthony read for us, and I'll read it again, saying, Where is he who has been born, King of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and have come to worship him. And I think that's a very chilling verse. The Christmas season is in full swing now, and all across the world there are scenes that feature Mary and Joseph and animals and donkeys and, and cattle and sheep and, of course, the wise men. Now, in those scenes, we don't see the details, which is fine, but to be specific, the wise men didn't show up to about two years later. Their text says they came to the house where Jesus was, and there are a couple of other clues in the story that imply that Jesus was probably between one and two years old. We don't know much about these men. They were obviously important and wealthy men, and they studied the stars. But we don't know how many there were. There were three gifts, but there could have been many more. 
We don't know their names, and we don't know exactly where they came from. There is speculation that they may have lived a thousand miles away, and that the distance for their trip may have taken about two to three months. That is considering the wise men only traveling by night to follow the star. There were no convenience stores on the way, so they would have taken much of what they had with them, and they may have traveled as many as 300 armed men and servants. It was a long and dangerous trip. But the big question is not where they came from, or their names, or how long it took them. The big, the big question is this, why? Why had these men traveled such a great distance? Why would they leave their homes and families and go on what might have been nothing but a wild goose chase? Well, Scripture says they did this because they come to worship the newborn king. When they reached Jerusalem, they asked, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. They come to worship Jesus because they searched the heavens and they seen a new star. A new star. Was that possible? Could there have been a new star in the heavens at that time? Well, that's what an author named Robert Kelvers believes. He spent three decades researching for his book, Star of Bethlehem, Star of Messiah. He cited writings from ancient Chinese and Korean astronomers who said they observed a new star about the time of the birth of Christ. McKelver also discussed paintings describing this in Roman as well as coins from various countries which depend on an unusual star about this time. He even noted observations from other cultures around the world that might refer to an un unusual new star at the, at, at the time of Christ's birth. He quoted, this is pro quoted from when they saw the star by Henry M. Morris. This was an unusual star. And do you know how to tell a star from a planet? Stars twinkle. You know how I know that? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a nursery rhyme, but it's dead on scientifically. As a lot of stars travel through the vast expanse of the universe and encounters turbulence that causes the starlight to twinkle. Planets don't twinkle, but I do think this star twinkled. I think it was a bolt light in the sky. This was a very unique heavenly light. In fact, this was a different kind of star than any that we've ever seen because this star moved. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 9 tells us, Behold the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. This star moved until it came over Christ's home, over Bethlehem. There's been all kinds of theories about how this new star could have been, a comet or a meteor, or a conflagration, a planet, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars, kind of what's going on. Uh, tomorrow night, right? So this is a $20 word, meaning that three these three planets lined up in a straight line in the Earth's sky. But each of these theories has its problems. This was a star that caught everybody's attention. A star that stayed in the night sky for at least two years, and it moved to a place directly over where Jesus lived. Ordinary stars or meteors or comets or planets can't do that. But this one did. And many wise men of her age are comfortable with that. Why would they be comfortable with that? Why do they have to rely on comets and meteors and such instead of simply being satisfied with saying it was a miracle? Well, the problem with modern man is that they're not satisfied with miracles. They don't believe in a God who can do cool stuff without asking. They don't believe in a God who doesn't need the help of natural phenomenon. They don't believe in a God who can do what the Bible says He can do, and they sit and they need natural explanations, like meteors and comets and stuff like that. Now, I would expect this kind of thinking from unbelievers, but it's true with Christians too. They believe natural things had to happen. I often listen to a man on the internet. He's a man who usually stands strong for the Word of God, but recently he said there is no way that God could have made the earth in six days. It just violated the laws of physics. And when did they pass those laws? These laws of physics, when did they pass those? What Congress or legislative body of rules makers decided that this is the way things should be? Well, they didn't, did they? The law of physics are simply observations by scientists that describe how things work in the universe. These are observations that are valid, and because these principles of physics are so dependable, 
scientists can predict without any error how the universe is going to behave in any given situation. Scientists call their observations of these predictable principles of the universe laws, but they're not really laws. They don't give you a ticket for violating them. These principles are just how things work in the universe. Now, who created the universe? God did. And just how powerful is God? We all know the answer to that. So if God, who created the universe and is powerful beyond imagination, decides to violate the laws of physics, who's going to stop it? We need to realize God's done all kinds of things that defy the laws of physics, and they're called miracles. Do you remember when Moses first met God? How did God get his attention? That's right, he appeared in a burning bush. And that bush was in flames, but it did not burn up. It did hurt the bush. That defied the laws of physics. That's not supposed to happen. Then when he led the Israelites through the desert, God led him with a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar by fire by night. That defied the laws of physics. You can't do stuff like that. But the really interesting time was an incident recorded in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. For centuries, God had dwelt in the midst of Israel in the tabernacle and later in the temple. His presence there was called the glory of the Lord. And remember that phrase. But by the, by the time of Ezekiel, Israel had become a corrupt nation, ignoring God and engaging in all kinds of evil behavior. And Ezekiel tells us that the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood on the mountain that, that is on the east side of the city. And that's out of Ezekiel chapter 11. The glory of God left the temple and left Jerusalem, and before leaving Israel, it hovered over a nearby mountain. This was the last mention of the glory of the Lord found in the Old Testament, other than in historic or prophetic reference. So the glory of the Lord left Israel. Now that also defied the laws of physics, but it also told us something cool. The glory of the Lord had left Israel in the days of the prophet Ezekiel. But in Luke, we're told, an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, in Luke chapter 2. The glory of God had returned to Israel. Just as the glory of God hovered over the mountain as it left Jerusalem, so the star in the east hovered over Bethlehem to announce the return of God's glory. The star announced that God had become flesh. God had come to dwell among men. That's why Jesus has referred to Emmanuel, God with us. Now the wise men of her age have problems with all that. If they can't explain Bible stories in natural terms, they're not comfortable buying into it. There are a lot, lot of people in Jerusalem in their story. When Herod the king heard about the star and the newborn king, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem was with him. All of Jerusalem was troubled because God hadn't done what they expected him to do. He hadn't done it their way. He didn't tell them first. Instead of appearing to them in Jerusalem where the important powerful lived, the angels had appeared to the shepherds out in the field, and the stars supposedly had appeared to the foreigners, not to the folks who had got, gotten notice, the Jews. And so the folks in Jerusalem didn't go to worship Jesus. Bethlehem was only six miles down the road, and they didn't get out of bed to go see him. But the wise men, in our story today, weren't like that. They went as much as a thousand miles to worship Jesus, to honor him, and to give him gifts. And did you catch their question when they asked of the people in Jerusalem, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star come to worship him. There was a star in the sky, and the wise men couldn't explain it. But they knew what it meant. There was a king to be born in Israel, and they're so excited about it, they left their homes and families and traveled a vast distance to be in his presence. Now how on earth did they know about this star? What made them think that it meant there'd be a new king born in Israel? Where would they get that kind of information? Well, they looked in the Bible. In the book of Numbers, a prophet had declared, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob and a scepter, the staff held by a king shall rise out of Israel. In Numbers 24, verse 17. The Bible told them all they needed to know about Jesus, and the Bible tells us all we need to know about Jesus. Now the only question is, what are we going to do about it? Now one last thing, when the wise men left Jerusalem, we're told the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. 
when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And that's verses 9 and 10. They saw the star, and they were filled with joy. Why? Was it because it was a pretty star? Or unique? Or unusual? No. They were filled with joy because the star was going to lead them to Jesus. I read the true story of a woman told about her daughter, Janice, Janice Park, in the Christmas play. The little girl was so excited about her part. She kept it a secret to her mom. And she told her mom, or her mom thought that she was going to be one of the main characters. So the day of the play, the mother said she could see the shepherds fidgeting in the corner. And there was Mary and Joseph standing solemnly behind the manger. In the back, three young wise men waited impatiently. But still, Jana sat quietly and confident. Then the teacher began, A long time ago, Mary and Joseph had a baby, and they named him Jesus. And when Jesus was born, a bright star appeared over the stable. That was her cue. And Jana got up from her chair, picked up a large temple star, walked behind Mary and Joseph, and held the star up high for everyone to see. When the teacher told about the shepherds coming to see the baby, three shepherds came forward, and once again, Jana jiggled the star up and down. She was excitedly showing them where to come. And when the wise men responded to their cue, Jana went forward to meet them and then led the way to where the baby was. On the way home, Jana said, With great satisfaction, I had the main part. You did, said her mother, wondering why she would say that. Yes, she said, because I showed everybody how to find Jesus. And now here's the point. God went through a great deal of trouble. To us humans, it was a great deal of trouble to point the way to Jesus. That's why you're here. And that's why most, most, most of us are Christians. But if you're not a Christian, what would it take for you or for God to point the way to Jesus for you? What would it take for you to be so excited about Christ that you'd be willing to give Him whatever He wants for Christmas? In the movie clip we showed before the sermon from the movie The Star, one of the wise men says, I hope you like frankincense. I'm not really sure what to get. Do you know what to get for Jesus this Christmas? There's only one thing God desires, and it's you. In the days of the wise men, gold and frankincense and myrrh were valuable comments. But they matter far less to God than your life. And that gift this morning gives you your life and your love and your dedication to Him. I hope you had made that decision this morning. Uh, we will baptize you if you want to be. If you want to ask for forgiveness from the church, we offer that invitation to you as we stand and as we sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. great lesson. Thank you, Andrew, for that lesson. To uh, be able to uh, put this service together, there's a lot of effort that goes into to all of this, and we appreciate all of that effort that uh, is being done for us to continue to be able to, to worship. We had some uh, young ladies this morning that prepared some, uh, and some young men, prepared some hot chocolate for us, and that was a nice uh, a gesture for them to do that, and we appreciate the efforts that went into that. And believe me, we are encouraged. As much as I would love to hear your voice and sing those songs and things, we're encouraged with your presence and we appreciate very much you being here. 
and uh, want you to remember that I have a service online this evening, so remember that uh, as we try our best to do what is safe and what we feel is safe, uh, we appreciate your patience and bearing with us. Believe me, and I, when I stand here and say that we are truly encouraged by your presence, so continue to do that as we continue to try to make the right decisions for our congregation and what is safe and what is best for each of us. Thank you again for being here. Yes. Also, this past week, uh, we went and delivered the uh, gifts that you kindly, out of your heart, gave for child aid. It warms my heart, puts a lump in my throat about your generosity. But the reason that you do it is because for your love of Him. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate it. <clears throat> 878. Sweet by and by will be our closing song. We'll turn there, we'll sing one verse, and after that we'll be dismissed in prayer. Again, thank you so much for being here. Men, remember, I'm asking you to uh, to come inside for just a brief moment for a men's meeting following our service. Again, you'll have the opportunity to social distance. We'll meet in the fellowship hall area. I wonder why I couldn't see that, because I got my glasses in my hand. They don't do much good there. Let's sing. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for watching over us. We thank you for letting all of us get to come up here this morning to get to hear a portion of your word. Pray, God, that you please be with everyone that was able to be up here this morning and that they can make it back. And I pray that we can all make it back at the next appointed time. Uh, we just thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, most importantly, for letting your son down the cross for our sins. Pray that you please be with us throughout this week. And I pray that we just thank you, God, for everything. It's Jesus' name.